Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is reading the Bible in 123 days. We're on day 101. Today we'll be finishing off Mark, reading chapters 12 through 16. So let's get started here in Mark. We have a parable. Always got to love the parables. There's so much you can learn from these parables as well, and you can break them down and... Um, dissect them and find out the true meaning it, i just think these parables all of jesus parables are very interesting so mark chapter 12 verse 1 and he began to speak unto them by parables a certain man planted a vineyard and set a hedge about it and digged a place for the wine fat and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country and at the season he sent to the husbandman a servant, that he might receive from the husbandman the fruit of the vineyard. And they caught him, and beat him, and sent him away empty. And again he sent unto them another servant, and at him they cast stones, and wounded him in the head, and sent him away shamefully handled. And again he sent another, and him they killed, and many others, beating some, and killing some. Having yet therefore one son, his well-beloved, he sent him also last unto them, saying, They will reverence my son. But those husbandmen said among themselves, This is the heir, come, let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. And they took him, and killed them, and cast him out to the vineyard. What shall therefore the lord of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the husbandmen, and will give the vineyard unto others. So this, uh, this parable here, I think we've talked about it when we were in Matthew, the same uh, parable, that uh, this very well seems like it's applying and it's talking about Jesus Christ, right? The Lord of the vineyard being God, giving it out to husbandmen, which um, were, you know, the, the, the children of Israel and the Pharisees, Sadducees, and all of them, not just Pharisees and Sadducees, but um, way before that, the children of Israel, different um, people, within the different ranks of them. Um, they would kill this, uh, God's servants, which were the prophets, and that's the servants the Lord of the Vineyard sent. Um, and then also the Lord of the Vineyard sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, and they killed him. So this, I think this is very clear applying to Jesus Christ here. And then, um, this last part, what shall the Lord of the vineyard do? Come and destroy the husbandman and give the vineyard unto others. So this could be applied in two ways. One is um, the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD, um, where Jerusalem and the, or the temple gets destroyed. And um, the children of Israel, or the Jews, they, they get scattered and a lot of them probably get killed too. But... Um, given to another you know i think that could be applying to um the gentiles because um things changed in acts where he wanted uh, the apostles to go out to the gentiles because the jews would not accept accept him and he wanted to provoke the children of israel to jealousy um, but also he uh, wanted the gentiles to, to the gentile world to be saved so um that's why I love these parables, a lot to think about, and you could study them very great and into detail. Mark 12.10 Have you not read this scripture, the stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner? What was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes? And they sought to lay hold on him, but feared the people, for they knew that he had spoken the parable against them. And they left him and went their way. And they sent unto him certain of the Pharisees and of the Herodians to catch him in his words. And when they were come, they say unto him, Master, we know that thou art true, and carest for no man. For thou regardest not the person of men, but teachest the way of God, a truth. Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? Shall we give, or shall we not give? But he, knowing the hypocrisy, said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Bring me a penny, that I may see it. And they brought it, and he saith unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? They said unto him, Caesar's. Jesus answering said unto them, Render unto render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. So you have to remember here with this um, situation, is 
He's saying since Caesar had his head and his superscription on the coin, right? He's saying just give back to Caesar what's, what's Caesar's. But you have to give to God what's God's because all things are God's. So it's kind of important to note um, what he's really meaning here. Then come unto him the Sadducees, which say there is no resurrection. And they asked him, saying, Master, Moses wrote unto us, If a man's brother die and leave his wife behind him, and leave no children, that his brother should take his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. So here we go. Um, we talked about this in Matthew 2. Another hypothetical extreme, because they're trying to tempt him, catch him in his words. Um, so... It's not going to work with God. Now therefore there were seven brethren, and the first took a wife, and died, and left no seed. And the second took her, and died, neither left he any seed. And the third likewise. And the seven had her, and left no seed. The last of all the women died also. In the resurrection therefore, when they shall rise, whose wife shall she be of them? For they seven had her to wife. And Jesus answering said unto them, Do ye not therefore err, because ye know not the scriptures, neither the power of God? For when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels in, are in heaven. And as touching the dead, they that rise, have ye not read in the book of Moses, how in the bush God spake unto him, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Jacob, or excuse me, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Ye therefore do greatly err. And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. This is none other commandment. There is no none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself is more than, the, than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto them, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. And the man after that, and no man after that, durst ask him any question. <laughs> you can't trip up God in his words. And Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple, How say the scribes that Christ is the son of David? For David himself said by the Holy Ghost, The Lord, Yahweh, said to my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. David therefore himself called him Lord, and whence is he then his son? And the common people heard him gladly. And he said unto them in his doctrine, Beware of the scribes which love to go into, in long clothing, and love salutations in the marketplaces, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and the uppermost rooms at feasts, which devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers. These shall receive greater damnation. And Jesus sat over against the treasury, and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury, and many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. And he called unto his disciples, and saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. In Mark 13. And as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. Jesus answering said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat, oh, by the way, this is a prophecy, and it came true. The destruction of the, the temple, and, and probably a lot of Jerusalem got destroyed too. Uh, by Rome in 70 AD, around 70 AD. So that did come true. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed lest any man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. 
When you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten, ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. But when they shall lead you, and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Now the brother shall betray the brother to the death, and the father the son, and the children shall rise up against their parents, and shall cause them to be put to death, and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he shall endure but he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where ought not, let him that readeth understand, then let them that be in the Judea flee into the mountains, and let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein to take anything out of his house, and let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. But woe to them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, and pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, for in those days shall be affliction, such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be. And except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved, but for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. And then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or, Lo, he is there, believe him not. For false Christs and false prophets shall rise, and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. But take ye heed. Behold, I have foretold you all these things. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And he, and then shall he send his angels, and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Now, learn a parable of the fig tree. When her branch is yet tender, and putteth forth her leaves, ye know that summer is near. So ye in like manner, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But if, but of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels in, which are in heaven, neither the Son but the Father. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants, and every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. This is very, uh, very good stuff here, these last few verses. Um, and you're, if you're wondering, how do we watch? How do we, as Christians today, how do we prepare and how do we watch? The best way is to read the Word daily, to be in the Word daily, to study it daily, to be in prayer daily, because God's Word is God's words. Every word in the Bible is God's is God speaking. So, we need to be prepared. We need to not be backslidden. We need to not be living in sin, because God uh, could come back, or Christ could come back, and guess what? What if we're um, doing his sin or we're living in sin when he comes back? That's not to say that necessarily we will go to hell, but we will lose rewards in heavens. Um, in heaven, we'll lose rewards. So we have to be careful that we're not backslidden um, and that we're not, we're, we didn't lose the faith completely. If we did lose the faith, that means we weren't trusting in Christ. That means we were trusting Christ in vain. We need to trust in Christ and what he did on the cross and in his blood uh, with complete and utter faith. 
and confidence that if you are trusting in the bloodshed for you, if you are trusting in Christ and what he did on the cross for you, how he was buried, how he died, was buried, and rose again the third day, according to scriptures, then you have that confidence that you will go to heaven. But if you are backslidden a little bit or living in sin, you may lose some rewards in heaven. That's why it's important to be prepared. Watch. He's saying watch here. How do you watch? By not being backslidden, being in the word, doing what's right, living um, properly as a true Christian should, being a light to the this dark world. Uh, we need to be a, a good example. When, when, when people look at us, we need to to seem like we're separate from the world. We don't, we don't need to be part of this world. Uh, we're commanded in the Bible that we should be separate from the world, be not yoked to the world, be not uh, of the world. So this is very important to, uh, to grasp. Moving on to Mark 14. After two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread, and the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft and to put him to death. But they said, Not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, he sat at meat. There came a woman having an alabaster box of ointments, of spikenard, very precious. And she brake the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves, and said, Why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than three hundred pence, and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, Let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever ye will, ye may do them good. But me ye have not always. She hath done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body to the bearing. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for memorial of her. Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went unto the chief priests to betray him unto them. And when they had heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought how he might conveniently betray him. In the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover, his disciples said unto him, Where wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover? And he sendeth forth two of his disciples and saith unto them, Go ye into the city, and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him. And wheresoever he shall go in, say ye to the good man of the house, The master saith, Where is the guest chamber, where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and prepared. There make ready for us. And his disciples went forth, and came into the city, and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And in the evening he cometh with the twelve. And as they sat and did eat, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, One of you which eateth with me shall betray me. And they began to be sorrowful, and say unto him, One by one, Is it I? And another said, Is it I? And he answered and said unto them, Is it one of the twelve? It is one of the twelve, that dippeth with me in the dish. The Son of Man indeed goeth, as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Good were it for that man if he had never been born. As they did eat, Jesus took bread, and blessed, and brake it, and, and gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine, until that day I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out, into the Mount of Olives. And Jesus saith unto them, All ye shall be offended of me, because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. But after that I am risen, I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter said unto him, Although all shall be offended, yet will I not. It will not I. Jesus saith unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this day, even in this night, before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. But he spake the more vehemently, If I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any wise. Likewise also said they all. And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane, and he saith to his disciples, Sit ye here while I shall pray. And he taketh with him Peter and James and John, and began to be sore amazed, and to be very heavy. 
And he saith unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. And he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto me. Unto thee, take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. Oh man, this is a great verse. And I said this in, in Matthew too, but when we pray, I'm going to do a Bible study on prayer. When we pray, this is, this is a good way to pray. All things are possible with God. All things. So when we pray, we don't pray like, oh, can you, Lord, can you? No, it's not can you. It's if you will, Lord, it will be so. And that's what he says here. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. This is a great way to, to pray. It's what God wills it. And it's God's timing, God's will when we pray. Not what I want. Not what I will. And not in my time. But God's will. God's timing. God's way. And he cometh, and he findeth them sleeping, and saith unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Couldest not thou watch one hour? Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. Again he went and prayed and spake the same words, and when he returned he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy, neither was they what to answer him. And he cometh on the third time and saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. It is enough. The hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise up, let us go. Lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. And immediately, while he yet spake, cometh Judas, one of the twelve, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves, from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And he that betrayed him had given them a token, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same as he, take him and lead him away safely. And as soon as he was come, he goes straightway to him, and saith, Master, Master, and kissed him. And they laid their hands on him and took him, and one of them that stood by drew a sword and smote a servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Are ye come out against a thief with swords and with staffs to take me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and ye took me not, but in the scriptures, but the scriptures must be fulfilled. And they all forsook him and fled. And there followed him a certain young man having a linen cloth cast about his naked body, and the young man laid hold on him, and he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. And they led Jesus away to the high priest, and with him were assembled all the chief priests and the elders of, and the scribes. And Peter followed him afar off, even into the palace of the high priest. And he sat with the servants, and warmed himself at the fire. And the chief priests and all the council sought for witness against Jesus to put him to death, and found none. For many bear false witness against him, but their witnesses witness agreed not together. And there arose certain and bear false witness against him, saying, we heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. But neither so did their witness agree together. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Answers thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? But he held his peace and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power, and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes, and saith, What need we any further witnesses? Ye have heard the blasphemy. What think ye? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. Some began to spit on him, and to cover his face, and to buffet him, and to say unto him, Prophesy! And the servants did strike him with the palms of their hands. And as Peter was beneath in the palace, there cometh one of the maids of the high priest, and when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, And thou also wast with Jesus of Nazareth. But he denied, saying, I know not, neither understand what thou sayest. And he went out into the porch, and the cock crew. And a maid saw him, and began to say to them that stood by, This is one of them. And he denied it again. And a little after they that stood by said again to Peter, Surely thou art one of them, for thou art a Galilean, and thy speech agreeth thereto. But he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not this man of whom ye speak. The second time the cock crew, and Peter called to mind the word that Jesus had said unto him. 
Before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. And when he thought thereon, he wept. Mark 15 And straightway in the morning the chief priests held the consolation, consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council, and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answering said to them, Thou sayest it. The chief priest accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. And Pilate asked him again, saying, Answerest thou nothing? Behold how many things they witness against thee. But Jesus yet answered nothing, so that Pilate marveled. Now at that feast he released unto them one prisoner, whomsoever they desired. And there was one named Barabbas, which lay bound with them that had made insurrection with them, who had committed murder in their insurrection. And the multitude crying aloud began to desire him to do as he had ever done unto them. But Pilate answered them, saying, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priests had delivered him for envy. But the chief priests moved the people that they, he should rather release Barabbas unto them. Pilate answered and said unto them, What will ye that I shall do unto him whom ye call king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. Then Pilate said unto them, Why? What evil hath he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, Crucify him. So Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them, and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium, and they called together the whole band, and they clothed him with purple and plaited a crown of thorns and put it about his head, they began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him on the head with a reed, and did spit upon him, and bowing their knees worshipped him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him and put his own clothes on him and led him away out to crucify him. And they compel one Simon, a Cyrenian, who passed by, coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. And they bring him unto the place called the place Golgotha, which is being interpreted the place of a skull. And they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. And when they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them, what every man should take. Which that is a prophecy, if you recall. Prophecy being fulfilled right there. And it was the third hour, and they crucified him, and the superscription of his accusation was written over, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two thieves, one on his right hand and the other on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, And he was numbered with the transgressors. They that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads, and saying, Ah, thou that destroyest the temple, and buildest it in three days, save thyself, and come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests, mocking, said among themselves the scribes, He saved others, himself he cannot save. Let Christ the King of Israel descend now from the cross, that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is being interpreted, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of them that stood by when they heard it said, Behold, he calleth Elias. And one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink, saying, Let alone, let us see whether... Elias will come to take him down. And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. And the veil of the temple was rent in twain, from the top to the bottom. And when the centurion which stood over up against him, over against him, saw that he cried, he so cried out and gave up the ghost. He said, "Truly, this man was the Son of God." There were also women looking on afar off, among whom was Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James the less in of Joseph and Salmone, whom also, when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered unto him, and many other women which came up with him unto Jerusalem. Now, when the even was come, because it was the preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and went in boldly unto Pilate, and craved the body of Jesus. 
And Pilate marveled if he were already dead, and calling up unto him the centurion, he asked him whether he had been any while dead. And when he knew it of the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. And he bought fine linen, and took him down, and wrapped him in the linen, and laid him in the sepulchre, which was hewn out of a rock, and rolled a stone unto the door of the sepulchre. And Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of Joseph, beheld where he was laid. In Mark 16. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he saith unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him, as he said unto you. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulchre, for they trembled and were amazed, neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Now when Jesus was risen early, the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him, as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. After that he appeared in another form unto two of them, as they walked and went into the country, and they went and told it unto the residue, neither believed they them. Afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Oh man, so good stuff here, good stuff. Um, I love reading about Christ's resurrection. He lives. I love how the angel said, he, he's not here, he lives. Isn't that amazing? Aren't those amazing words? We have a Lord and Savior who defeated death, who died for our sins, who carried all our burdens, all our sins, nailed to the cross, bled, blood for us, for all our sins. That is something that we should take comfort in, that we have a Savior, that if we're trusting in that, we'll have eternal life. Trusting the blood of Christ, trusting what He did on the cross, trusting that He rose again from the dead. He defeated death. So, amen to that. Anyway, that's the uh, end of Mark. So we'll uh, continue uh, with Luke tomorrow god willingly so thanks for joining me i hope you guys have a great evening morning noon wherever you're at remember to put god first in everything you do have faith in him trust in him keep waiting upon him and you'll never be sorry so yeah can't wait to read more and i hope to see you guys next time so thanks again see you later